We are going to cover broadly in these sessions a theory, a unifying theory, of strategy, business strategy, and application of this into real practitioner terms. This is required to do within our current economic system, within our current political and societal system. Some of the concepts that I will cover in this little session are outside, technically speaking, outside the sessions we're going to cover the next few days. But I think it's worthwhile mentioning, and there are other sessions that we can do another time to delve into it more. But our political and societal system, and hence our lives, are very much driven by the economic concepts. And I would like to then share with you some of these economic concepts and some of the peculiarities with them, whether you agree with them or not, with my views. That's something we can discuss later, and I would be very uh, interested in your, um, uh, your, your perceptions and your, uh, your uh, reactions to what I'm going to cover now. But within this system, we require to have a strategic planning, a strategic thought processes, and uh, uh, the uh, a methodical way of dealing with some of the concepts. So why is this system? What, what is it? Well, as you know that we broadly, the world has had these so, so socialist systems of, for economic uh, um, uh, concepts, for economic uh, systems. And those uh, have were characterized by the, by the politically as Eastern Bloc or socialism or communism. And, their difficulties have collapsed, and you're all familiar with the history of the losses made in those nations uh, that they've covered uh, those um, centralized allocation of capital based, based on the number of concepts as, as, as um, uh, advanced by Marx and others. So we keep that aside. So therefore, we left with the market system or capitalism which was uh, by default to some extent was the only system that we left with. And most countries today, even those who are coming from the old Eastern Bloc, uh, they still have some variations of this market-based uh, capitalistic system. Even if the political system doesn't match it, certainly the commercial system matches it. This capitalistic system is predicated on uh, you know, a number of elements. For those of you familiar with economic theory, uh, the con consumption, investment, exports, imports, government expenditure, and so forth. But it's primarily based on uh, ability to um, control the economic systems. And it has two levers. Broadly, the monetary lever, lever which in most countries are handled by a independent central bank that sets the monetary policy, sets the interest rates, the cost of money, and the amount of money. Expansionary monetary, quantitative easing, quantitative contraction. So the first lever looks after the price of money, price of capital, and amount of capital. The next lever the capitalistic system has at our disposal are the fiscal lever, which is handled by the government, the government budget. Expansionary fiscal policy, contractual fiscal policy. Government spends a lot of money, economic activity. Government spends a lot of money, economic is slowed down. And most countries to try to keep them independent and manage the economic system. And there are theories associated with it that the flexible exchange rates are more effective under a monetary policy, fixed exchange rates are more effective under a fiscal policy, and so forth. But the fact is we've got a system where whilst we're left with it, and whilst it impacts our lives today and in the future in terms of superannuation and future investments for our consumption in the future, which I get back to, on a daily basis. This system, by its nature, is unstable. It's done us a lot of good. It's gone through years of technological development, trade, invention of capital, money, central banks, banks, and all the controversy goes with banks and central banks and all the uh, conspiracy theories goes with it. But nevertheless, it got us to where we are, not everywhere on the planet Earth, but where we are now in terms of our technological developments. So it's got a lot of good things. But it's an unstable system. 
when things are going well in our capitalistic system, we tell each other, we wonder when the next recession is coming. We read the news. Exchange rates gone up, exchange rates gone up, inflation's gone up, there's a slowdown economy. So it is a system that is by its nature unstable. It does two things. Many things, but two important things for the sake of this conversation. One is firstly accumulates more and more of the capital towards a smaller and smaller portion of the economic agents. If you're wealthy, your children are better educated, they're likely to have better jobs, better wealthy, and whilst the economic system might call a parade to optimal, but nevertheless, it pushes the wealth towards a smaller and smaller portion of the society, as you can see in countries like America and many other Western countries. Second thing it does, what it does is that it's, it's, it's unstable. When you have a look at our risk module, when you talk about volatility and uncertainty, you see that it's very volatile. It will sooner or later cause a recession, if not a depression, even in the good times. If you went to a restaurant and you ate meals there and there was a possibility of food poisoning every time you had a meal there, you wouldn't go to that restaurant. Well, I think most of us wouldn't. If it was a structure, like a bridge, and every time you went across this bridge with your car, there's a possibility of bridge collapsing, and you would say, well, I'm going to go over this bridge another time. It might collapse, it might not collapse. Well, you wouldn't use that bridge. Nevertheless, you stick with the system, and we use it day in, day out, knowing that in the future, it might collapse. It will collapse. So we've got a system that's unstable. It does disproportionately move capital to a smaller and smaller group of economic agents. Most of our taxation systems are burdened by wage earners because the tax taken off them before even they get the wage. Even the countries have got indirect taxation system, GST or VAT on source, you still find that burden of the tax is on the, on the, on the shoulders of a small portion of the society or a group of society, not everybody distributing the, uh, the tax burden equally. Our intermittent, our intertemporal allocation of current consumption versus future investment in the form of superannuation, pension, most countries have. That's got a lot of economic theory behind it, the golden rule of solo and all that, that how much do we consume today, how much we put uh, aside for future investment so we can consume more as a result of return. That itself can be heavily impacted by the volatility of this system. So we have got capitalism, which has inherent flaws and uh, inherent inequalities, but it's the best we have, or the only system we have. We will have a different session in the future about new economic paradigm. But in the context of this session, we are stuck with this system. Within this system, I submit to you, and I'm very interested in your views, that you need to have some form of methodical, strategic thinking. We will say in our strategic, mo strategic module, that doesn't mean that you always have an optimal outcome. You might have actually have a suboptimal outcome. But over time, it makes a lot of sense to have a series of correlated tactics based on the available information towards a desired outcome. And most of us live our lives like that, and the business require, it requires the same. And so we will cascade this concept that I said into how does that work into business towards operational efficiency, doing routine things and creating competitive advantage and creating above normal return to capital and becoming wealthy.